His hand kind of does a lot of nothing. Like, it, it can <laughs> cast a turn two Dak Faden if he wants to give up his blue card for force. Uh, but otherwise, it's four lands Mox Diamond. Yeah, Brett's hand looks much better, uh, even as the protection. Uh, and a lot of mana lined up, so... Yeah, Brett has turn one sneak attack with force backup. Turn one sneak attack? Oh, I'm sorry, he doesn't have turn one sneak attack yeah. yet. <laughs> but Spoiler he might have alert. turn one sneak attack if he, if he draws another Lotus Battle or, let's say, an Ancient Tomb. Yeah, City of Traitors, Ancient Tomb. Yeah. So, let's see. There we go, jo uh, <laughs> Brett. <laughs> Brett has turn one sneak attack. And of course he goes for it, and that were, like... They will trade forces, and Joe will be left with nothing. And even if he draws something, there's a pretty good chance that Grizzlebrand will draw into the needed uh, force of her plus blue card. <laughs> Joe must be like, really? Come on. <laughs> I mean, honestly, his keep was already kind of sketchy, because like, Faden doesn't really... Well, I, I, I guess Faden loots for two, which helps. Yeah, I mean, it's not irrelevant. Um, Joe's also playing Thopter Sword, so... Pitching a Sword of the Meek is essentially a free card. Yeah, but th th that's not the kind of matchup where you're concerned about card advantage, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Baleful Strix here will block Gristlebrand. Uh, not an Amrakul, but can block Gristlebrand pseudo-effectively. Now, if he had a Thopter Foundry on the board, he could block and then sack to prevent the life gain, but, you know. That's pretty cute. I yeah, like that. could be relevant. So what the the uh, Bayfus Strix basically does is it stops Grizzlebrand from drawing seven more cards than he could draw, I guess. Yeah, so Brett Still. has 14 draws here to find any red source. You know, it could be a fetch land, could be the fourth Lotus Petal. And uh, an Emrakul. Yeah, and Emrakul. Uh, regardless, he finds a Grizzlebrand and a land, so he's set up for next turn already. So what is Joe looking to draw here? Since Brad has a Force of her, I guess there's nothing can really do at this point. Yeah, the odds definitely aren't looking good for him. He could draw a cavern of bur on Bird and play another <laughs> Painful Strix. <laughs> and run Brad out of, of Grizzle Brands and hope he never draws an Emeracool. <laughs> That's Man, a lie. Death Touch. That touch. That's what I want. <laughs> and Brett is like, look at all these cards I can't hold. <laughs> yeah, so another thing, Brett can just uh, sneak in Gristlebrand at end of turn here if he wants to be mana efficient, I guess. Um, which won't be relevant. It's uh, just the wording on sneak attack. It's at the next end step instead of at the end of turn. Fairly I guess certain. It's, it's somewhat relevant because it gives him one more mana, so you can, like, Crystal Brand draw and ponder to find, like, or ponder twice if he finds another ponder to find the Emrakul. So it would be definitely worth it. Yeah, I'm gonna kill your screen real quick, Julian. Okay. Uh, just so I can end these hangout calls. Oh, you got a different des desktop background. Oh yeah, I, I changed it from that dog. <laughs> That's the <laughs> picture of, dog? of what computers thinks, yeah. think dogs look like. <laughs> we caught a brief glimpse of it during week one. Okay, so here comes Gristle Brand number two. And probably draw seven, find Rakuten and the win, I yeah. would think. Uh, Joe can sack the Mox Diamond here to create a Flying Thopter to block. Um, but there's two Emrakuls, so... Brett's gonna be like Taylor Swift in Field 22. <laughs> and that's the game. And he takes the game. So, what do the, the guys have in the sideboard? Like, right. for, what so, do we see? Joe has a Trinisphere, a Lodestone Golem, a Misdirection. Those are all probably going to come in. Um, Ensnaring Bridge in the main. Just the one of, though. Uh, he has two transmute artifacts to find it. Probably his most important card here. So I'd imagine Brett brings in Wipe Away, because that's, that's kind of his only out. Um, Brett can't otherwise beat Ensnaring Bridge with his list. Uh, what do you think about Sabo's degree for uh, demons? Or it, Eldrazi's? <laughs> I mean, it, it takes out, you know, creatures in hand. It's a six-drop instant. But I... <laughs> 
I don't like it. I would not bring it in. I, I keep forgetting about that it uh, doesn't search the library. Like, when I first saw the card, I always thought it, it searched the library and extracted you for all those creature types. <laughs> that would be quite brutal. <laughs> yeah. I, I'd probably actually give it a shot. Uh, Tuzzeret is, you know, a pseudo big mana deck. Uh, it's, it's the only deck I think that can play Mind Twist, um, which is, is curious mm. why it's still on the reserve list. Is the Notion Thief come in? I guess so. Yep, uh, Notion Thief is in. Curiously, it looks okay. like the Thopter Sword combo came out. He's he's thinking it's probably too clunky. Like once it gets to the point where uh, Brett actually starts attacking, I don't know. I mean, you have to cut something, and it's like a very marginal edge that you can get. It's not like you actually get to control the game with it. All right, so they have uh, new sevens now. Let's see, Brett's hand, uh, it's pretty close to casting Emrakul. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nine of the 15 required mana. It's feasible, but I think he'll mulligan. Uh, Brett, uh, I'm sorry, Joe, it's, it's debatable. He might keep it just because he's Joe and he hasn't learned a <laughs> mulligan pr with decks that aren't miracles. Um... And that Lodestone Golem could be annoying. He has a little bit of protection in resolving it with Misdirection. Um, Dak Vaden not doing a whole lot. Again, it's a blue card for Misdirection right now. And then Tazaret is a pseudo game fi game finisher or can help him dig for Ensnaring Bridge. You know, if Brett Cash Show and Tell, Joe puts in an Ensnaring Bridge, you know, it is the best he can hope for at this point. Unfortunately, uh, Cho can't put in Planeswalkers for the show and tell. Yeah, still using the old wording of land, artifact, enchantment, or creature. No Eureka. <laughs> Eureka is just permanent. Although Hypergenesis also goes back to the old wording. Um, Hypergenesis, you know, based on Eureka, also can't put in Planeswalkers. So... Trying to see how these next couple turns are gonna play out. Um, uh, that's a transmit artifact, so I guess we're gonna get the signet down. And does he have enough mana to transmit artifact for and saying Bridge? And would you even like do it in the blind here on the next turn? Well, yeah, uh, next turn he does. Uh, he has three mana. Yeah, um, but would you do it? I think it's definitely worthwhile. Although, if he draws a land, I'd rather slam the lodestone golem. Uh, it's both a taxing effect, which is relevant, because Brett's trying to cast three and four drop non-artifacts, and, you know, it provides a clock. It's a four-turn clock. You can protect yeah. it from this forcible with that misdirection. And there's the land. That's the land, yeah. So, protected lodestone golem over transmute. Transmute sets him back a land drop as well. Yeah, I think I like lodestone golem here. I mean, the problem is, if you go Lords on Golem and the opponent goes Soul and uh, Show and Tell, Big Guy, uh, what do you do? Well, then you can transmute the next turn. Yeah, and, and if it's Grizzlebrand, it doesn't matter because you got the Lords on Golem, so you can't force on your turn. Yep. So it is yeah. still still leaves Brett as, uh, still leaves him an out of drawing his wipe away to get in for damage, but it's not. Yeah. Joe doesn't just lose on the spot. So is Brett going to brainstorm here for now? Uh, he... I think he's going to top. Okay. Try and find a second force, maybe. Give him a little in more information if this Lodestone Golem is relevant. Uh, he might not care about it, uh, even though it's a four-turn clock. You know, if I think I'd rather, have the, I'd rather have the second force than, than pitching force to force here. Yeah, well, if... Um, Brett had a soul land on top, he might just not care about this Lodestone Golem, just show until an Emrakul next turn, uh, which shuts off Lodestone Golem being able to attack. Um, but also, if he finds no lands on top with this top, then, you know, this Lodestone then Golem resolving really is huge. Fun. Yeah. Oh yeah, that makes sense. So he's basically just checking top for information and not actually looking for something. Mm -hmm. I mean, he might find something, um, you know, if he did find a second force, he might put it on top if he didn't also find yeah. a soul land. Yeah. And the trick here is you misdirect the force of will to the misdirection, because as per the rule of rules of the game, a counter spell can't target itself, but it can target the misdirection. 
And well done, Fizzle. Once Misdirection has left the stack. Okay, Pyroblast. <laughs> Pyroblast, right on time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I really, really like Joe's position here. Yeah, so Joe has a four-turn clock. Um, what does, I mean, does Tesseract do? Do you even go for Tesseract here? Or randomly transmute artifact for something? I mean, it, you're not getting bridge here, of course, but... Yeah, uh, getting bridge, you know, doesn't do anything. <laughs> that will actually shut you out of the game once again. <laughs> it prevents Brett from attack. winning, but you're forced to rely on Tazaret to win you the game at that point. Yeah. Or, uh, well, he sided out Thopter Sword. Dave in the chat says he thinks Joe is going to get into snaring bridge either way. <laughs> Brett and apparently pretty much kill himself that way. <laughs> Brett apparently uh, stuck on two lands. Does he have enough mana to get a second lodestone, or does he only run a single lodestone? Uh, I believe it's a single lodestone from the sideboard. Ah, yeah, true. So Brad is looking to draw Soul Land. Actually, it needs to be City because he can't use Ancient Tomb next turn anymore. Yeah. I mean, even the Soul Land doesn't win uh, since Joe has Force Up and Brett wouldn't have the mana to Force back because of Lodestone Golem. Oh, that card is so good. Yeah. <laughs> and it's legal and legacy? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even if Brett, you know, found a Soul Land here, I don't, I don't think he has outs. Um... He knew his top two cards, he dug one card deeper, he needs soul land plus something else. Well, okay, I guess if it's a City of Traders, he plays it this turn, then he can top into another land, third card down. So he did have one out, but he needed to find exactly City of Traders with that Brainstorm. So, tops for lulls here. Doesn't, doesn't have any outs. I think Joe knows he doesn't have any outs. Yeah, especially against the Force of Earth, there's probably nothing he can do. And we go for the third game. Alright, so our uh, our faux sideboarding screen here. Um, I don't think they actually make any changes. Uh, play draw um, doesn't make a huge difference on how each deck is trying to operate, what their game plan is. I was wondering whether you would bring in the Abyss, just to be kinda safe against the random turn to show and tell for Emrakul. Or does it actually work that way? It targets the creature? Is it non-black? So, non-artifact, so you could even kill Grizzlebrand. Okay. Um, Joe with a one lander, not even a soul land. If it was, he might keep it just for, you know, turn one chalice. Looks like a hand that Joe would keep easily. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if one of those cards was Sensei's Divining Top, Joe keeps that 100%. <laughs> but they both go to six. I like Joe's hand. Yeah, Joe's hand is a little awkward. Ancient Tomb is going to be his turn one play to cast his chalice, but then Baleful Strix Probably. isn't getting cast unless he draws a Demir Signet until turn three. In which case he could just Notion Thief. Uh, it also doesn't have anything to disrupt Brett's combo. Like, it doesn't have counter magic or an ensnaring bridge. Yeah, but, but for a 6 card hand, I kind of like it. It also stops the show and turn into Crystal Brand, at least for a turn or two, or two, until he used the cards he drew to do something. But now that the Chalice is gone, nah. Oh, and Brad doesn't find land. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's almost, like, I would say that's almost the game. Like, Bayfoot's Strix comes to... Actually, no, you would probably... Yeah, as you mentioned, Notion, Notion Thief. Yeah, you'll be able to cast Thief and Strix on the same turn. And I assume Brad is not gonna... Not gonna brainstorm next turn, and is probably just gonna play the top and then brainstorm on the next main phase. Yeah, at which that... point, Joy will, will flash in the Thief and... And Brett will be forced to force the full pitch show and tell. Mm -hmm. Unless he, oh. you know, finds a blue card as his next card naturally drawn. Or I guess he could blind draw with top in response to try and hit a blue card. I guess we still know the next card that's about to be drawn. Um, yeah. So there's oh, that ensnaring bridge. Nice. Do you just run it out here? Oh no, he's going to land Well, you have Notion Thief. Um, but yeah. also, if Brett casts show and tell, 
Um, you can just put it in for free, mm -hmm. and Brett doesn't have an opportunity to counter it. Um, so really not playing it only loses to Brett having sneak attack here, um, which, you know, he does have sneak attack, but doesn't have the five mana to kill Joe with it quite a bit off, actually. Okay, so Brett found a land, so he didn't have to brainstorm, so he's not running right into the notion of the thief. And now Brett could force a pitch brainstorm. Yeah, so I mean, does that mean Brett found a brainstorm with the top and chose to draw Force of Will instead of making his land for turn? Oh, he made he made his land drop for this turn. Well, no, but last turn he didn't. He uh, maybe it was the third cut down. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't that's manipulated his deck at all since then. Yeah, but he, unless like, that was an upkeep top. Yeah, but the, now he's seen one card deeper. Yeah, so important. Uh, Notion Thief resolved. Brett's hand of Brainstorm Force of Will. Let Notion Thief resolve. Uh, I Joe, really don't agree with that. Yeah, Joe with the Academy Ruins now. Um, he can keep recurring. Well, he can recur Chalice next turn if he wants. He can recur Ensnaring Bridge if... Um, well, what's it called? Um, if he casts it and it gets countered. But why wouldn't you pitch the brainstorm to the force of a notion thief? Just yeah, like, I mean, notion thief. The is brainstorm like isn't really gonna do anything, and just like to 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 decrease the clock. That's like three damage in the air every time. It would would already be worth it. Yeah, actually, not a flyer. Uh, but yeah, it, it is three damage every turn. Oh yeah, yeah. They didn't draw wings on it, so I guess it doesn't have flying. <laughs> Caleb says, holding brainstorm for force of will. Force of will. Interesting. Holding bra Yeah, I guess. But is your plan really show and tell Emrakul here? Yeah, so Joe recurring that countered in Snaring Bridge. I guess your plan could be show and tell sneak attack Emrakul at some point. That don't bring, like, if he can find the land. But with Bridge coming up every turn now, and even Grizzlebrand not being able to draw any more cards, should he actually draw the Grizzlebrand? I, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. So, interesting to note, this is uh, Joe's first Game 3. <laughs> <laughs> In the entire league. <laughs> True. Uh, and, yeah, shown to Emrakul. Uh, like, a defense of Emrakul. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it doesn't block the Strix very well, but... This Notion Thief isn't getting in for three a turn anymore. He can always Pyroblast the Strix if it becomes an issue, I guess. Um, yeah. But the Emrakul not attacking until he finds a wipe away for that ensnaring bridge. He should play Painter, like set Painter on blue and then Pyroblast the bridge. <laughs> well, okay. I guess Brett has another out. Uh, with this Notion Thief... He can cantrip so much that Joe draws his entire library and decks. Yeah. So, <laughs> what is that, 44 <laughs> cards left? Something like that? Well, even that's not a, a super great line because of that Academy Ruins. <laughs> I mean, it used to be an issue when you played against these uh, old-fashioned Omnitar decks when they had Enter the Infinite. Yeah. <laughs> that was something that actually came up, but <laughs> let's see. I have Man. forced my opponent to draw like, you know, forty-seven cards <laughs> when he didn't have that many because because of, of Notion Thief versus Enter the Infinite. So what a uh, what is Joe looking to draw here? I mean, he's got this pretty well locked up. He can even record Chalice if he wants. Yeah, I mean, Joe is on an eleven turn clock, or well, I'm sorry, Brett's on an eleven turn clock. I'd imagine, you know, Joe could do something to try and increase that. Yeah, um, you, you really don't want to be caught with, like, wipe away on your ensnaring bridge. Yeah, because deck lists are known and Joe knows Brett's only out is chalice on... Uh, I'm sorry, is wipe away, he can just chalice on three here. Oh, that would be cute. And then Brett can't actually win at that point. 
Egg, is he going to go for it? <laughs> Brett can't actually win from that point except for the make Joe's notion thief kill him plan. <laughs> oh, he, he's going for it. Oh my god. <laughs> so there's Chalice on three. I love that. <laughs> Man, he should really play, like, an altered win condition, like Shaman of the Pack. <laughs> yeah, Brett can't even draw with top here because of that Notion Thief. <laughs> oh, man. The master of chalices. <laughs> That's so amazing. Well, Brett and is... Takes the match. <laughs> Brett was one of our undefeated players, and, uh... Whoop, Goodbye, that, that's the wrong one. Um, and now Eldrazi is in the lead. Uh, with a 1-0 record, although um, Romario plays next against Caleb Durward. Uh, so, Tin Fins versus another Chalice deck. I kind of feel bad for Caleb, you know. <laughs> so do I. Not doing so well, but he has a bunch of good matchups after that, I think. He, he should, at some point. <laughs> <laughs> He's slowly running out of people to play against. Yeah, so I'm going to throw up a beer at back screen and set up for the next round. Uh, I'm going to do this thing for Southwater Magic first. <laughs> 